I'm warning you, comic fam, not a lot of solid spec, but I hope that this pays off. Another week, another list, an Overstreet Price Guide Advisor back at the table, broadcasting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. Russ Bright, how you feeling? I am fantastic, Tom. I'm so glad to be back here after a couple weeks away and super excited that we have Fire Guy Ryan helping us with the trending list this week. Yo, Ryan, how excited are you about some of the books on this list? I'm excited. I'm very hopeful that a lot of this stuff will pan out. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button, and at the list at number 10, just got done watching this movie last night. We have Predator, issue number one, debuting in 1989. Predator Prey on Hulu, jaw dropped, my favorite Predator movie of all time, including the first one. Already seen it twice. $60 $60 average sales, $850 for CGC 9.8. Now, we were talking about this book and the Aliens book when Marvel got the rights to make Alien and Predator comics back in 2020. Well, this is on the list this week because of the Hulu exclusive movie, Predator Prey. Yo, how long was Predator in comic book development limbo? Like Russ is saying, I remember seeing this book announced and previewed in the catalog, and then they just quietly pulled it, and it just didn't talk about it for until now, and and we're finally getting this book. Speaking of which, over at C2E2, there was an exclusive drop hitting $70 averages, a variant by Raza that looks gorgeous. It's a virgin variant, and I think compared to all the other Predator books, that one is the most attractive. Now, that Resolve variant is awesome, but the book on the list has a 100% increase over last week's sales. Keep in mind, if you're getting raw copies of this book, there is a second print that looks identical, and you will only know if you check the fine print on the inside first page. Not only is this the first appearance of the Predator in comic books, there's not a whole lot of major Predator keys. Books that are worth really knowing that have have a whole lot of value and the way that you can keep up with all of them because you should know them is by downloading key collector comics the best comic app in existence use code tom 101 to unlock a free two-week subscription support the show but get access to categories to key books so you can know them when you're on the hunt you're going to find some predator keys that a lot of people are not aware of use the app and at the list at number nine what do we have Number nine on the list, Superman number four. We are seeing the first appearance of Bloodsport spiking again this week. Now we have $15 average sales for Roz, a $210 high sale in August of this year, but we are seeing deals left and right. This book has been going for less than $100 and even a low sale at $76 recently. I think this is great spec right now. Bloodsport was Easily one of the characters that was a fan favorite during the James Gunn Suicide Squad movie next to John Cena. And given that John Cena's role as Peacemaker got him an entire spinoff and a season two in the works, what's next for James Gunn? Especially after all of the failed DC movies that are not just happening, but are actively being canceled. And I'm sorry, Ryan. Green Lantern's not looking pretty good. No, I've been very excited for that Green Lantern HBO Max show for a while now, and it looks like it's not going to go through. Uh, Thankfully, apparently James Gunn has had conversations with people at Warner Brothers and DC, and he has been told that his side of this DC universe is safe. Idris Elba has been talking publicly about wanting to revisit this character and fight Superman, even, so... Seems a little safe. Probably why we're seeing an increase of copies sold of 367% on a book that's a white cover that I have had a notoriously difficult time securing in high grade. So at number eight on the list, we have Wonder Man number one from September 1991. This book is going for $15 on average, but in July, we had a CGC 9.8 sell for $168. This right here may be a great opportunity to snag this book because... It's pretty common, Russ. I mean, I've seen a lot of these in your back issue bin over the years. This is one of those runs that people have roundly ignored forever. It's from the early 1990s. It's that point in time where people were just printing more and more books. Spawn was hitting really hard. Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man was hitting really hard. There were a lot of books that were happening. So things like Wonder Man just have been forgotten. People bought it. People read it. People forgot about it. I found three copies that were in my 50 cent bin a couple months ago. Really, this is a book that no one's been talking about. Nearly $170 highs, but I'm seeing people snag these for near $100. And a newsstand sold for $250 this past week. This is the first ongoing series of Wonder Man, an increase of 282% in copies sold. And I think it's because of the 
the, uh, the prospects, the high likelihood of success of the director attached for this production. So they have announced a Wonder Man Disney Plus series with the director of Shang-Chi, Destin Daniel Cretton, attached. But now he's also attached to Avengers Kang Dynasty, and they didn't really add on any more Wonder Man confirmations since then. So I, I'm a little hesitant on this one myself, personally. A lot of this information debuted at San Diego Comic-Con. Some of the uh, question marks are expected to be revealed at D23. Since the recent information, we have seen a 282% increase in copies sold. And I think this is really, really going to be a fun show. We're talking about it being a comedy. And the casting has led us to believe that they're looking for a struggling Hollywood actor type, which is a really 180 from a superhero type character. I hope it's going to be good. I am crossing my fingers that Bloodsport gets to the screen. I want to see another sequel to Predator. And next on the list, at number seven, I'm praying to Thor that we get the return of The Punisher. We have the first ongoing series issue of The Punisher, issue number one, debuting in 1987. I think this book is underrated, still undervalued, seeing $40 average sales and a high sale for $281 this past week for a CGC 9.8. But I'll remind the community that back in May, this book hit heights of 330 for a 9.8. So we were just at C2E2 and also Rosario Dawson was at C2E2 on a panel and she let slip that they are bringing John Bernthal back for more Punisher stuff. So she straight up like announced it, that she was so happy that she was going to see the return because that series was the only one she didn't appear in because she plays Night Nurse. Correct. And it sounded, the, when I watched that clip, I got the vibe that she had she had heard somebody else confirm that this was news. She was not aware that she was breaking news at, on stage at that moment. And then she had to backtrack it a day or two later in a tweet and now my personal, I'm, I'm going back and forth. Like, which one was the lie? Yeah, was she telling the truth or not? Correct. Comic fam, let me know what you think. We'll play a very short clip. It'll enter you to win this invincible Tyler Kirkham Omni-Man variant that sits behind me. But we saw an increase of copies sold of 140% since all of this news took place. So con season is in full effect. So we know these panels are happening. And every single time an actor gets up and opens their mouth, assume they're lying. <laughs> Keep in mind that every single time Charlie Cox was asked directly, are you doing Daredevil? Nope, I'm not doing anything. None of these things. And we know there is so much more Charlie Cox Daredevil happening. Yeah, he's being She-Hulk. He's getting his 18-episode series. And not to mention his appearance in Spider-Man No Way Home. We have, at the list at number six, more She-Hulk spec. I kind of foreshadowed it. We have Incredible Hulk, issue number 213, seeing $18 average sales and a 9-4 that hit $113. Ross, I don't think people were specking on this book. They were definitely not specking on this book. Any appearance of Jack of Hearts was completely and totally a sleeper until very, very recently. This is his first appearance, by the way, and I'm assuming many people are not as familiar with this character. He's shown up quite a bit in recent comic books, however. Really recently. Like, he's the, like, I would say the second lead character right now in the current She-Hulk series. Uh, Silver Surfer Rebirth just wrapped up and he popped up in that book. Both both really out of nowhere because he hasn't been a character really since like Avengers Disassembled back in like 2004. Yeah, remember when uh, there's this like big old bomb after a character gets resurrected? Well, this is that character. He can't really control his powers well and he's essentially like a, a ticking time bomb. 800% increase in copies sold this past week because of a very brief glimpse of what could be this character or maybe Immortal Man? Now, speaking of Mr. Immortal, West Coast Avengers number 46, the first appearance of the Great Lakes Avengers and Mr. Immortal, also made it onto the trending 20 list over on Key Collector, the larger list which we source these 10 from. That book is going for $15 average sales this week. That had a 200% uptick in copies sold. We already knew spec about Mr. Immortal prior to this quick little glimpse of what could be the Jack of Hearts. The suit kind of matches up, so it makes sense why members are specking on this book. And Ryan, I think you are on to something there. Why utilize this character so much randomly 
so close to the premiere of She-Hulk. At the list at number five, we have Marvel 1602, issue number one, debuting in 2003. I'm warning the comic fam, Neil Gaiman's about to take over this damn list. This is an affordable book that you're going to be able to find when people aren't paying attention. $8 average sales, $130 for a CGC 9.8, but Buy It Now's on eBay are substantially higher. Apparently, they showed a trailer at Con, Ryan. There's reports that there was a, a What If Season 2 trailer that they previewed at San Diego Comic-Con and a glimpse of this uh, 1602 universe being the basis for like an upcoming episode in Season 2 of What If is the, is, the, is the speculation here. The Neil Gaiman first Marvel published work taking us to the time of the witch. Anytime I can bring up Anya Taylor-Joy, comic fam, the 17th century painted comic book Talk about a new world that happened 400 years ago. So out of all the Disney Plus shows, What If wasn't necessarily my favorite, but the fact that we're getting a 1602 episode next season, hopefully, it's got me really excited, and apparently it has a lot of other comic people out there in the world excited because there is a 180% increase in copies sold in this book week over week. Now, Neil is a fantastic writer, but we also know he has a great sense of humor. In the intro to the collected version of this, he actually has a note that says, To Todd... Thank you for making it necessary. And this kind of alludes to when Todd McFarlane and Neil created the character Angela in the Spawn comic book. And there was a legal dispute over who owned it and who was going to get paid for a very, very long time. Neil Gaiman dropping the damn mic at the list at number four, The Hood. Number one, debuting in 2002, seeing $55 average sales. And wait for it, a 9.8 hitting $550 as of August what happened? Well, we're seeing the first glimpses of Riri Williams in her new show, and I think we see the villain. Yeah, there's definitely been a couple of those like sneaky street photos, uh, paparazzi-type photos taken on the set of Ironheart. We got one of uh, the armor, the Ironheart armor. Looks pretty damn cool. We're seeing like the, the Model 1 armor. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, someone who is clearly Parker Robbins, the hood. For anyone who doesn't know the hood, the crime boss, the other version of a kingpin in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Ryan, hit him with it because I know you love yourself. Some Brian Michael Bendis. I do. The Hood uh, shows up a lot in like Brian Michael Bendis' new Avengers run right after Civil War. Basically when, obviously, after Civil War, superhero versus superhero, everything's kind of chaotic. No one's really paying a lot of, of attention to like actual villains because everyone's fighting each other. That was actually right around the time that I was really getting back into reading comics, too. Probably the same with you. Oh, yeah. That's my, that's my era. That that's Jemens as well. Game. Exactly. So you have this guy, Parker Robbins, who he's like a slightly superpowered criminal, right? He steals a magical cloak from a demon that gives him like invisibility powers, as well as this pair of boots that kind of let him like, like float levitate. off the ground a little yeah. bit. He's not like flying around or anything. He's not like Iron Man boots, but he's, it lets him kind of sneak around. He's, he's basically a, a sneaky thief guy who manages to kind of thread this needle while all the superheroes are busy doing all this other weird superhero registration act stuff. He manages behind the scenes to coalesce a really, really strong power base. And he's a fascinating character. An increase of 500% copies sold since these pictures surfaced on the internet. A character created by Brian K. Vaughn, popularized by Brian Michael Bendis during the time that he was doing Secret Invasion, which is also slated for Disney Plus comic fam. We're getting a ton of Brian Michael Bendis adaptations to the screen. Could be a good safe spec if you ask me. I would concur. And another comic book that I'm crossing my fingers hits the screen. Scott Snyder, Ryan. I'm telling you, brother, you got to change your opinions with books like this coming out. We have Dark Spaces, Wildfire, number one, seeing $8 average sales. This book doesn't even have an issue two yet. This book is kind of the whole reason I really wanted to be on this video today. This is this was one of my favorite books from last month. I was actually working at the shop the day this book came out. I went home. I read it. I started work the next day. We had a few leftover copies on the wall. Yeah. And every single person that came in, I was like, hey, you know, just so you know, that book was my favorite book of the week. It's a really cool book about wildfires and firefighters. And they were just, nobody listened to me. And I, you might still have some of these at the shop. <laughs> I'll check. <laughs> I definitely need one. An increase of copies sold of 1,100%. We're going to probably have to do a review of this comic book because Snyder is so damn brilliant. And this is going to be perfect for the screen, which the rumors are seemingly alluding to a lot of different articles have said that this is not only option, but is looking promising. Yeah, IDW has been making a very, very strong push. This is the first 
uh, released book in their new push for original content. They're about to drop nine new comics, all original brand new ideas and IP. And Dark Space's Wildfire, number one, by Scott Snyder, is the first one. We have a group of female firefighters who are actually prisoners doing a job for super cheap. And they decide to go away from the fire to try and do a heist at a mansion that is kind of at the heart of a forest fire. And we start out the issue with the reveal that all of them will be dead by the end of the story. Brilliant. Page by page, the art is wonderful. I'm getting some Jeff Darrow vibes to a degree. Right, yeah, the art's wonderful. The colors are really cool, and it just this, the whole the whole setup, the structure of the story, the fact that you find out the ending right at the very beginning. Like, I'm on board. It's only going to be a five-issue run, so go check it out. And then at the list at number two, we mentioned it. Neil Gaiman's taking over, and Ross, you're wearing that death shirt for a reason. I absolutely am. You guys know I am a death fanboy. I love my Sandman. Number two on the list, Sandman number eight, $110 average sales, $1,370 for a CGC 9.8. I know a couple weeks ago you guys were talking about this book, and it was seeing high sales of $1,000. This is just a modern key. This is one of those books that... I have been telling people to buy forever. And now the Sandman show is on Netflix and it is getting amazing reviews left and right. I think this book is here to stay, Tom. 275% increase in copies sold. I hope the comic fam listened to me back when I told them that it was a good time to buy because the book has moved up near $400. And this isn't the only book that made the trending 20. Shout out to Sandman 21 seeing $20 average sales because if you... Enjoy owning the key appearance of Morpheus's dreams, Sister Death. You're going to want to grab Delirium's first appearance. It's a 400% increase in copies sold in that book alone. And keep in mind that Dream has a bunch of brothers and sisters. The and Endless. The Endless has so many first appearances. They are very, very comic accurate for a lot of this show, and I think many more of these Sandman books are going to continue to pop off as we do more and more Sandman on Netflix. Hit the like. Slap that subscribe button. We have a giveaway on deck. Join the August mystery mail call. We only have a couple more days left for enrollment. Let's go through the books that we're sending out to every single member because we have multiple exclusives that we made. Chris Claremont back writing Gambit and we got Peach Momoko to do the mystery mail call variant this month. I am so excited about this one, guys. I do a whatnot exclusive virgins and trades going out at random, but it's guaranteed one per box, not both. Just like this next variant done by Davi Go, a daytime variant, a nightmare variant. We have Flavor Girls number one by Boom Studios, an homage to one of my favorite Sailor Moon covers, issue number two. I had a good idea, and I think it paid off. The last exclusive we have in the box is called Isolation number one. Uh, it's being written by Reggie Collex yeah. and Doug Bratton, uh, and this variant cover is done by uh, Nate Made It, friend of the show, and it's an homage to Tomb of Dracula number one. We gotta support the independent comic books. We gotta support our homies when they make one. Congrats, Reggie Collex. And at the list at number one, another book that you called, Ryan. We have eight billion reasons for you to spec on this book. I'm just kidding. At the list at number one, we have 8 Billion Genies that debuted in May of this year. That's already optioned, and a universe is in development, seeing $25 average sales and a 9.8 hitting 170 bones. Yeah, issue four of this eight-issue series just dropped this week. So we're already halfway done, and there's been plans announced for an 8 Billion Genies movie that are trying to build a whole universe of stuff out of this story, which implies to me hopefully, that we will get more than eight issues of this comic because this is my current favorite series right now. Eight Billion Genies is a lot of fun, and we actually talked about it on the channel back when issue one dropped. It's been a while, though. Indeed, there's like an increase of a copy sold of 131%. Do you remember that ash can that we talked about that had drawings on all of them by the creators? Well, people be sending them to CBCS. Now, since those ash cans were already signed and sketched, the people sending them to CBCS were selling them for $450 last month, and now we're seeing them go for $750. Every time there's a new issue, we're seeing a pop in this number one. Issue four came out this week, but also a second print of number two and number three. Image came out last year and said they were going to really scale back doing second printings of things because of reduced 
paper in the industry. So the fact that this book is so popular and we are already seeing second prints of number one, number two, and number three, this book is going somewhere. It sounds like they're answering a wish that the comic fam had to see more printings of this book. The variant covers of this run, however, were really silly. Some of them are, you know, just kind of random. They're humorous. Doesn't really allude to anything in the book. But now they're spiking because this book is wanted. But I think one of the variant list, specifically a store variant, shout out Bird City Comics, is the variant to buy. I also would like to shout out Bird City Comics for doing this really cool variant here. For 8 Billion Genies number one, they got uh, Trish Forstner of Stray Dogs fame to do a really cool homage to uh, Super Mario 3, uh, the good one. You know, the good the good Mario. The best one. one. <laughs> right, the one we all played. Uh, it's clearly the best uh, 8 Billion Genies variant, if you ask me, too. Uh, there was a 9.8 CGC copy that sold last month for $780. Wow. For a 9.8 hot damn comic fam we appreciate your time today let me know what you think about this list in the comment section below and as always geek responsibly no said comic fam join myself butch fire guy ryan russ we're all there on the best new place to buy and sell collectibles whatnot available for both androids and iphones dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long i even started a new show on tuesdays with fire guy ryan we gave away a lot of comic books last week. Yeah, we did. Join us, and we'll see you very soon.